Hey there, it's Brie Bear and welcome to today's video. Welcome to the first day of beta. Today we are doing a troop talk and this one is all about book turnet drama. So I have today a tea and this is the David's Tea Vanilla Cappuccino. And it smells amazing, but it's way too hot to try. And also, I am living for this lip color way more the longer it sits on my face. And uh, I'm wondering why I have not been wearing it. Anyways, so today we're gonna be talking about Bookshanet drama is basically exactly what it sounds like drama within the book internet community this mostly i feel like takes place on twitter um but it's rooted from things that happen on booktube and it's usually between booktubers that i feel like the stuff happens i don't know a lot about booktube drama and today i'm gonna kind of tell you why i don't really know about book internet drama number one i don't follow people or subscribe to people who are involved in it um if there's drama it's not in the circles that i'm involved in for another thing uh i don't read twitter <laughs> i occasionally tweet things and i occasionally read tweets from specific people but i don't scroll twitter and I don't try to discover new people on Twitter. Like, I just don't keep up with it, really. Um, so I don't see these conversations and these threads of all of the drama because I don't read the things where it's present. Um, I'm not involved in any way, and I don't care, for the most part, about most of it. And here's some of the things that I think about why book turnout drama is dumb. <laughs> Number one, we're all just here to enjoy life and read books together and talk about books. And um, if you don't want to talk about books with a specific person, you don't have to tell the world that. Like he said, she said type of stuff, like in between two people or like a group of people. You can just not talk about books with that person. Meaning if you don't like a person, just don't talk to them. You don't have to say anything big. You don't have to make an announcement. You don't have to tweet or put your that opinion out in the internet. We don't need to know why you're no longer associating with a specific person. That's between you and them. That is personal and like that's between y'all. And you know, if you have a friendship and you have a friendship breakup, leave it alone let it go nobody needs to know what happened that's between y'all and if you feel the need to try to keep other people from watching someone because of something they've said or done that makes you really childish because like in what world is it your business how other people interact with that person like if they're no longer a part of your life then you need to just let it go and move on unless it was like that they publicly said something about you directly you don't need to mention it um, some of the other things that um i see drama um about is um differing beliefs uh people get canceled all the time because they believe certain ways or they think certain things they have certain opinions and if that's not the generally accepted thing in society at the moment then they're canceled it was that way a hundred years ago it was that way 200 years ago and it's that way today it's just what is accepted now or what is generally believed by the loudest voices and the general populace now is different than what it is 200 years ago so if their beliefs are different now in any way more forward thinking or less progressive it's like this huge you know 
you're a horrible human and we all hate you. And it's kind of terrible that the world has come to this. If somebody words something the wrong way, then they get this big, huge attack and it's not going to, I mean, if you're upset with somebody and you want them to apologize, how should you talk to them? Should you attack them and like try to scare them into apologizing? Probably not. Probably not gonna work that great and probably is gonna, you know, end up, I mean, you're backing people into a corner if you speak to them in a certain way, right? So if they say something and unintentionally offend you, then why would we come at them with this like claws out vibe before we discuss like in a calm and rational way, hey, I don't know if you know this, but that's offensive to some people. We've gotten this mindset now where it's like you have to be a certain way to be accepted, right? And the thing with drama is that you're trying to force somebody into a specific belief system or mold. Oftentimes, that's what it's rooted in. But instead of coming at it from a place of like trying to share what you feel, and try to understand what they feel or like try to maybe share why something that they said offends you or could be harmful. Come at it with this very angry or aggressive tone and then there becomes this argument back and forth, right? So the fact that we as people have gotten to this point where we feel so entitled that because we watch somebody's videos, we get to dictate what they believe what they think what they say how they have experienced life and what tell them what they should already know by now like it's that's such a big thing too is like everyone is still learning things about other kinds of people about other kinds of lifestyles we're all still learning there's an infinite number of things to learn and so if somebody does something or says something that is offensive within their video and you feel confident enough in that uh, person's ability to receive, you know, a kind, generously given bit of information like, hey, you might want to do some research on this topic. I just wanted to let you know, blah, blah, blah. That's one thing. But it being this thing where it's like trashing people or like saying, that this person should be canceled and they have like literally five subscribers. I don't get it. <laughs> and it's a thing on the booktronet, apparently. Apparently. I don't, I don't know. I stay in my lane. I'm not gonna comment on somebody's video and tell them that what they said was rude or offensive to me. Unless it's somebody like really close to me. And in that case, I wouldn't comment it. I would message them directly and try to set up a conversation with them so that we can have a discussion about it and I can explain to them why they came off wrong. And that's a friend thing. Like, I don't even do that like with all of my friends even, honestly. I only do that with people I'm extremely close to. It genuinely, I feel like, a lot of drama and, like, keeping people in check and accountability and stuff has gone way crazy ever since COVID started. Because people were in lockdown and they got bored and so they decided to criticize everyone around them rather than analyze their own stuff. She said what she said. And so because of that, we got this whole cancel culture situation where instead of out of a genuine concern for that person and out of genuine love, come to them with information to help. I do think, again, that you need to be in the right position for that though. I am not going to be held accountable by certain people because that's not their business. That's not their job. I have people in my life that it's their job to keep me accountable. And I know inversely that it's my job to help them too. Because I don't know everything and I'm, you know, 
a person with many things to learn and much education to continue to have for the rest of my life because I can't help who I am. I like to learn things. And so I'm going to keep learning things like the rest of my life, you know? And you need to give other people the opportunity to do that too. And so by stirring up drama, you're pushing people away from wanting to learn new things rather than drawing them in, pulling them into the interest of learning new things. A lot of it is rooted in things like people saying things that are racially inconsiderate. There are certain people who have a right to speak up about those things. I agree. Oh. Okay. Okay, cappuccino. Part of the issue too, I feel like, is the desire for this perfect apology. There is no such thing as a perfect apology, especially from a person who's trying to learn something new or furthermore, from a person who's unexpectedly been chewed out by somebody. You gotta give them some time for one thing for another thing, you can't expect a nice, pretty apology uh, from someone who is also offended by how they were spoken to. Not what was said, but how they were spoken to. Because sometimes people get mad. And when they get mad, you know, like if somebody says something that offended me, I might get mad and respond in the heat of the moment rather than like taking my time to respond. And so then I might offend that person right back, you know? out of like my emotional state, right? Which is fair. And, but then I shouldn't expect them to apologize like in a pretty perfect way that satisfies me. A, because I'm probably still upset at this moment. I'm probably still nitpicking the crap out of everything they do or people get this perception of who you are and they, they stick with it. And I think that honestly, is sometimes the case when it comes to these kinds of situations where it's like we don't want to believe their apology because we're so sure that they meant to hurt us. And we're so sure that it's not good enough to say sorry because we don't feel better. It doesn't make us feel all nice and bubbly and happy inside and like at peace with the situation. And that comes down, that boils down to learning forgiveness, which is a hard thing and sometimes takes everyday effort to do. It's hurting me, not them. And like, I'm the one being affected by it daily by not letting go of it and moving forward with my life. And like, by letting go, I don't mean like, pretend like it never happened. Cause that's not the thing that you need to do but letting go of the hurt and stop trying to dwell in that pain and saying it was a mistake that they made, intentional or not, and sorry or not, I'm moving forward. And I think this is something that um, ties into next week's conversation as well uh, in regards to that, you know, that Yes, everyone says stupid things. Everyone says things that are uneducated and poorly chosen and, you know, could be taken the wrong way. Everyone does. We all do it at times. Um, no matter what side of any argument you're on, you're going to say something dumb at some point. But why should we let that... Um, carry on into like big long Twitter threads and you know ranting and raging and what does that do for you? Is it truly cathartic or does it just continue to ignite the flame and fan the flames that you have burning inside of you which is really just anger and like do you want to waste your time and energy on that anger or do you want to move forward with your life and find other more peaceful and enjoyable things to do? The fact that there are channels and like Twitter accounts specifically for 
the T on booktube. Um, or like whatever bookish drama is going on. Like, why? 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 The T is good. For me, I don't really want to be in any of that space because I'm trying to live a life of forgive, move forward, find joy, find peace for myself, and not burying things or letting them burn on and on. Because that's the thing that most people do. They bury their pain and their anger and their unforgiveness and they try to hide it from themselves. They put it, they put it away from themselves. You know, a job that you're no longer at, the hurt and pain that happened before you left or whatever, um, you bury it because it's no longer something you see every day. You just bury it. But then other hurts, uh, the job that you're currently at, that you have something ups that you're upset about, and then you rant and rage about it all the time, and you keep going on and 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 on about it. Like, you're doing it to yourself. You're putting yourself in this horrible space of negativity, of being surrounded by negative people because they encourage that. They encourage that behavior out of you. If they listen and don't cut you off at some point and be like, look, we've heard enough. Move on. Like, if that's not the kind of people that you have in your life, that can eventually... Now, granted, they need to be able to listen. You need to be able to speak about it, you know, for the first time. Maybe two times. But eventually, you need to be moving on. So if you're on time number 10 that you're ranting about the same thing that's unforgiveness and you're hurting yourself you're wasting your own life energy on something that somebody else did that you can't change or undo or control so why are we you know even making that all of that over something that's supposed to be enjoyable anyway. The whole point of the book internet is to celebrate literature and the love of reading and writing, right? That's the whole point, right? So why do we bog it down with this negativity that we're bringing from our own personal problems, which is our own personal unforgiveness issues and our own personal um, negative Nancy issues. Like, you're allowed to say, I'm not going to watch this person anymore, but you don't need to tell other people, you know? You're allowed to decide that. But, like, other than, like, your circle of people, like, you don't have to spread all that informa information around. You don't need to tell everybody and their mother to stop watching so-and-so because they hurt your feelings. Other people will figure it out for themselves. Let them. It's okay. It's okay to let other people make their own decisions about what they think about a person based on what they see. It's okay. Like, I don't need to know who it is that's, like, um, okay, my, my D group partner, she, uh, is talking about, uh, so-and-so, such-and-such did this and such, but she doesn't say names when she talks, you know, she's talking about, like, somebody, you know, said or did something that hurt her, and it's, like, a situation that happened with somebody I know, she doesn't say names. She doesn't tell me the details of who it was so that she's not gossiping or tainting the image of that person for the sake of her own self-satisfaction. Because that's all it is when you're trying to tear somebody else's channel down because they, you know, disagree with you on a certain point. Like, that's just trying to satisfy your own craving for revenge. So that's my thoughts on why booktube 
slash booktoonet drama is dumb and why I don't care about it at all. So, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. <laughs> This one was a little bit more ranty, I feel like. Like, I was just, like, preaching a little bit about unforgiveness, I guess. But it's true, okay? Most drama is rooted in unforgiveness. Because, like, I understand being offended by something somebody says, but if you feel the need to make other people also be offended and upset with that person, that's unforgiveness. <laughs> like, that's literally what the drama is. It's not, it's not, the drama is not the, the initial issue. That's just a disagreement or a fight. The drama is when the person who was offended has to go around and try to make other people also offended. You're trying to make other people mad. So that you have other people to be mad with you. You're so caught up in your own unforgiveness that you want other people to also not forgive that person. You need help, my friends. You need help. That said, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day or night, whatever time it is for you. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can join the Bear Scouts and the notification bell down below so that you'll be notified every time I post a new video. And most importantly, so that I can see you again very soon. Peace out, Bear Scouts. <laughs>